is interesting, this little exchange here, because Mansell's not going to go out, so Van Dijvenbode needs one treble for a dart of the bullseye to get that break that he's been vying for. Well, if he misses this, and Mansell takes 80 with the last dart again, it's just the same as before. But running out of time with every leg, it doesn't happen. It's the mouse and the hare, or whatever two animals you got racing each other. One of them just keeps taking the lead again by a certain distance. It's just going to be one dart, though. Every time he's needed it, it has been there. But it's not this time. And now maybe it's the Titans' time. One dart, a double 16. Could be a game changer. Dirk finally equalises. Tina gets the single. Will he go double double? It depends on what he does with his first shot here. Choices. Well, it was a half hearted attempt, really, at double double. And now. He's relying on a Mansell miss or him holding his own throw in the last leg. It'll have to be door number two. Dirk may just go treble 20 here. I think it's the right play. He thinks not. Now he's got the quandary. What quandary? Not interested in bothering the bullseye. But this key moment of the match, a last leg decider. He's given himself three darts at double 16 instead. Mickey's put up one heck of a fight, but in the second half of this match, Dirk has been stronger. One left. And ultimately, Dirk is too strong for the Cyclone. As resplendent as that incredible shirt that he's wearing right now in memory of his dad which, for me, is the shirt of the week. Well, it's the first hold of throw in this match. Mervyn King has just come out of the blocks absolutely flying. But Searle now responding. 1-7-7 opener from him. Followed by... Followed by... Another! I did see a dart as about repetition. Michael Van Gerwen, the first person to hit a nine dart that didn't finish on a 141. It was actually a 147. He did 57 bullseye tops, didn't he? He was back in the Masters of Darts, I think it was 2007. He, oh, yeah, that one he had a 174 after a 180 to leave 147, and he took it. And I think that I was speaking to somebody about that leg this week. It apparently took 43 seconds. Ryan, you require 54. Well, 54 for Searle. Loves tops, lands tops, back in the match. I give him a 2002 Lakeside final against Tony David. Or maybe the 2004 against Andy Fordham. But the reason I chose 2002, and no disrespect to Tony David at all, but the one for Andy Fordham was just iconic. But for Merv to be known as a world champion, in the same sort of ilk as Steve Beaton. I would love that for him. Well, I'm going to ask you a question in the next leg, but there's a question to be answered in this one first. It's not in. Is this? Oh, that's a gorgeous dart. Oh, it's a beautiful finish. It's a great game of darts, and there's only three legs left potentially. It's all got a little bit scrappy as Searle approaches the finish line. He keeps giving King opportunities. Mervyn King keeps declining them. He's had his chance to get back in the leg, but unfortunately, with Searle on tops, it may be just seconds away. Rarely any other outcome than that. As Ryan Searle succeeds. The king has been overthrown. He's been outthrown and thrown out. And from a 
great darting hotbed, his part of the world. Lives in St Helens, same town as Michael Smith. Can you imagine playing local darts in St Helens and just walking in? Oh, there's Stephen Button, there's Alan Tavern, there's Michael Smith, there's John Bulls, there's everybody else. And now he does need two Bulls. Doesn't get it this time. He needs three balls, but I'm not sure he'll go that way. In fact, I'm damn sure he won't. Well, he's not gonna. But he might just get it anyway. Oh, that's incredible from Yoza. He'll be hoping to stop that. Because if he doesn't, this weekend, or indeed at Alexandra Palace, his ranking is going to slip a lot. Usually comes up with something, Ali Pali, doesn't he? Will we see the annual Gary Ali Pali rally? Jamie requires 78. Can you say that again? No. 78 for Hughes, 20 for Tops. Can't see all of it. 38. Can't see enough of it. You also hit a 150 against you, Stephen. This would be a great way to respond. I see it'd be a great way. Tops. Oh, it's amazing! <laughs> what a finish! He's just 29 behind, but he's still got the darts for me firmly in his hands now. Look at that mouth. Just almost like one of those ugly dogs you see on Instagram saying, I want that treat and I want it now. I don't think I'm following that particular account, Paul. I think those dogs are called Griffies. Let's see if Hughes can get his teeth into this. Double 16. I don't care how good Bunting is, you can't take 190 out. I think he knows that the exit door is being prepped. Oh, does he though? Because. Oh, what's he doing here? Because Jamie Hughes is just as culpable in this match to miss a load of darts at double as Stephen Bunting is. Did he really go for three balls to leave tops? Does it make any difference? Oh, he gets there in the end. Jamie Hughes defeats Stephen Bunting. We haven't seen the match, of course, between Price and Joyce, but it's a big shock that he lost to Barney at the Grand Slam as well. His price just starting to, to fade at the wrong time of the year. I'll answer that question on January the 2nd. Or maybe he'll answer that question on January the 2nd. Question. Answer. Extraordinary finish from Dolby. 167. That's the biggest we've seen today. Well, this is absolutely nuts, isn't it? I mean, the whole tournament's nuts so far, but Chris Dolby in this match is exhibiting that going for double one in each of the first two legs then taking out 72 and then going full circle and hitting one of the hardest possible checkouts 167 on the ball it is the he's gonna have to figure out another way of staying sharp other than playing on the dev tour and when you're up against someone like Dolby if you're not sharp you're gonna get done and there is a exhibit a well this would be out of a clear blue sky Can't rely on that kind of thing. Game over, surely. Double 16. Dominance from Doby. A 6 1 success against Kurt Nenches. It's been Probably stings a bit. Yeah, I think he is a player who, again, is awaiting his next obvious step in world darts, and that would be going on to win some kind of senior title, wouldn't it? Vincent van der Voort, of course, has done that, but it's many moons ago now. The last one was a Euro Tour event in 2014. Yeah, eight years ago. Well, eight and a half years ago. You went deep in that one yourself. Schindler going deep into this checkout. In fact, he takes it out. did Vincent van der Voort beat me in that tournament? I still maintain that van der Voort's got to take this 120. Can he? Will he? Oh no! He shouldn't have been anywhere near that flight 
and it skews off into the single one, giving Schindler a chance for 5 0. He might go eight here. For tops. 24. High wide and not particularly handsome. I tell him he said that. That's what he was trying to do. And you just never know. The fight back might just start now. But he could. And if Van Gerwen and Humphreys both suffer shots on the first match on the main stage, we, will, we won't have any of the top five in the world in the tournament after round one. So who's the highest ranked James Wade? He would be at number six, six yeah. One four six to get to six for Martin Schindler, who's had six match darts already. And he'll be feeling like Vincent van der Voort is 6-6-6 for him. This would be an absolute rip-roarer. 60 bull. Bull! Well, Martin's already missed. Six starts for the game. And he's not going to get a better chance than this. Finally, finally Martin Schindler gets over the line. He raced into a four-leg lead against a man who's been his darting nemesis for the last five years. Ross Smith. Yeah, that was in the midst of Michael Smith's best winning run of his career, wasn't it, when he won about four or five titles in a row. Yeah, including Martin. New York, Holland, and two three that, on the floor. Two that weekend that you just mentioned, wasn't it, two of those? Yeah, and John beat Chisnell, beat Aspinall, Ross Smith. That run's looking even better now, considering what, what Smith's done, but finally John O'Shea might get a look at the outer ring. He'll be hoping he does, but he's still got 65 left. Well, not the outer ring, but the bullseye. And it's the outer bull that gives clinical Clayton another checkout chance. Really? Double 16. I have never seen Johnny Clayton go that way for 101. Why now? And John O'Shea is thinking exactly the same thing. The John O'Shea that I saw at the Circus Tavern because he was... Oh, I, I don't even know if, if there's a word in the, in the Gaelic language or the English language to describe just how pepped up he was when he won that championship, beating Scott Waits in the final. I'll never forget it. But if Clayton hits this, that's it. All done and dusted. Well, it has been classic Clayton checking out. But he can't quite complete the job with a big John finish. Will O'Shea at least land a leg? Oh, unfortunately for John, it's turned into a bit of a nightmare. And you just get the feeling that Clayton is about to put him away. Starting to split to leave double eight. And there is no joy for the Joker. Well, they would be after 32 years, wouldn't they, Paul? Are you trying to insinuate he's been using the same points for 32 years? <laughs> wouldn't be the only one, let me tell you. 78 then for Campbell. This could be a pivotal exchange in this match. Double top, Campbell finds it. Beaton finds himself in need of three straight legs. Really have been going for a 140 from 306 there. This is exemplary. That is absolutely perfect from Campbell. That was a thinking man's 174. Well, did work it out that time, but Campbell has been taking out this kind of thing for most of this match. Is it two tops? It is. There's one of them. And there is the other. As Canada's Campbell crushes Steve Beaton. 7 5. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Oh, I almost went for 1 7 1 as well. Well, he piles the pressure on the German giant. Is he up to it? With the heat. Piled on by Gary Anderson, his darting nemesis, he fails to give himself a dart at double, and Anderson 
having started throwing scrappy stuff, got himself angry, but now he's back in bother. Number 16. That first start was very shaky. Gary's got a lot of fans in here. And they're all crying his name once again. In fact, UK viewers, you can catch the end of it from some analysis on all of today's action over on ITV4 around the world. Whichever broadcaster is showing it, and if a broadcaster isn't, then it will be on the other streaming channel here on PDC TV. For the match. How big is this 127 for Clemens? It's going to be to stay in the game. Well, what a setup shot to leave it. Piling in his second max of the match to leave 127. That is how close he was to forcing a decider. Now Gary Anderson can get the job done. Now Gary Anderson could have got the match won. He missed two darts at double 16. Can he hit double eight? Well, he missed him by the same sort of margins. That corner of the board has robbed him of chances to take this match all the way. He just can't seem to beat him. It is a fantastic five for Gary Anderson.